two minutes. There's a Kaddish after this food. Don't run anywhere. Shimon Simon the Just, Shimon Tzadik, was in the Shiori Nesak He was in that great assembly which had such celebrated uh, notables as Mordechai and, and uh, other greats. And that, that was the period which led to the very opening of the mission in the Talmud, to the uh, to the Tzadik. So he was from the Shiori Nesak one of the greatest and very last one of the of that great assembly. Who are Yoimer? He taught us the following. Our Shloisha Dvarim Hoyla Moimit. The foundation of the world. The world stands on uh, on three on three pillars. Al Torah, on the study of Torah, the adherence to Torah principles worship, which generally means uh, when someone davens every day, that's the, uh, that's labor of the heart. So, uh, compassion, kindness, and goodness. So helping others and, and uh, kindness and, and uh, showing concern for your fellow man. The uh, 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 we received the Torah uh, after seven weeks after after uh, the uh, we celebrate uh, Pesach and before the uh, the Klal Yisrael for the Jewish nation exited they left Mitzrayim they exited from Egypt a command went out from the Rebbeinu from Hashem the Almighty. To Moshe Rabbeinu, Vishalo Ish Meis Reihu, Visha Meis Viusa, that uh, every Jew and Jewess should borrow Meish Meis Reihu from their neighbor. Which Reihu means more than neighbor means more like a brother. Meis Rusa and women also from their from sis, sisters. And uh, mm-hmm. one of the commentaries, Rabbeinu Bachaye. He says it's, it's astounding, it's a, it's a uh, skull cracker. The Egyptians are referred to, the Almighty Bernstein told Moshe Rabbein they should borrow from their brothers, their sisters, the Egyptians, they should borrow, to refer to use the expression brothers and sisters, my goodness, that's what you call a brother and a sister. They, they tortured them, they, they worked them to death. That's what you call a brother and a sister. Rabbi Lachai says like this, the following, that from the sixth day of the creation, the sixth day when man was created, when human beings were created, and until the Almighty went out peddling the Torah throughout the nations, 70 nations of the world. And uh, until then, the, uh, mankind, there was brotherhood. Every, every human being from all the seven nations of the world they were considered brothers, brotherhood. But when the Almighty offered the Torah to each individual nation, and they turned it down, one one nation turned it down. They said they asked. You know, the question was, what is what what kind of commitment? Mike Simba, what does it mean to be to accept the Torah? So when told them, by Sinai, one of the Ten Commandments, thou shall not steal. They said, oh, we can't live that way. That's, that's how we make our lives do it. <laughs> yeah, another nation also asks what, uh, what kind of commitment? By Shirzah, thou shalt not kill bloodshed. He said, no, he said, we live. that's how we live. So when based on this refusal to uh, uh, commit themselves to Torah, they, the nation of the world took themselves out of the, out of, there was no more brotherhood anymore. Not the brotherhood. Uh, uh, Somebody saying Kaddish tonight for a very special soul. Uh, a seven-year-old girl, when the war broke out, Nina Perobas Yitzchak, she was seven years old when the war broke out, and while other children were smiling and playing with dolls, she had no smile on her face. She played with death. 
She was running right. from country to country during the, uh, Russian roulette with the when the, the Nazis, <coughs> when they invaded the small town of Kloisenberg. In their sadistic manner, uh, the, way, the way they celebrated was they gathered all the Jews of the town together into the center of town. And then they paraded the Kloisenberger Rav, the Chusa Yogin Aleinu, the Kloisenberger uh, Rav, they paraded him into town, torturing him, teasing him, pulling his beard, and put him into the center of the circle. The commander, with all the, the troops, their guns trained on the rabbi, so the commander addressed the Kloisenberger Rav. He said to him, Rabbi, let me ask you, he says, uh, do you consider yourself the chosen people? The Kleisenberg Rev said, yes, we do. In a fit of rage, the commander took and lowered his gun on the head, on the skull of the Kleisenberg Rev, knocked him to the ground and kicked him. And he said to him, Rabbi, do you still, do you still consider yourself the chosen people, in a loud and clear voice, he, he said, we most certainly do. Mm. He continued to kick him and to beat him. Wow. And torture him said, you stupid Jew, you humiliated, tortured, beaten. How in the world do you consider yourself the chosen people? From the depths of humiliation, the Kleisenberg Rav replied, he says, as long as we are not the ones that are torturing and murdering innocent people, we are the chosen people. Mm. The Klan Yisrael, uh, the, uh, the world exists on the Milas Chasodim, compassion, one Jew, one taking care, not only taking care of uh, the concern for others. There, there's a, a measure, the following medrash. A, 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 a laborer <coughs> was working, a Jew, a Yid, was working out in the field. There appeared, there appeared before him an elderly sage, a vision. He said to him, I have for you a special gift. I have seven good years mm -hmm. of bounty and riches. You have a choice. Do you want them now? I can give it to you now from heaven a gift, what? or do you want them at the end of your life? <coughs> he looks at him, he didn't know what to answer. When he went home at the end of the day, so he, he told his wife, he said, you know, uh, Hannah, he said, uh, a sage, somebody, uh, an elderly gentleman appeared to me <coughs> and made a proposition, do I want, what you, uh, I, don't, I don't know what to tell him. He <coughs> said, she said, don't entertain it, forget about it. It's, it's witchcraft. He wants money, who knows what he wants, forget about it. So, uh, another day passes, a couple of days, a week passes, and this same, say, elderly gentleman keeps coming back to him again and again. So he comes back to his wife, he says, you know, he said, the same one, he came to me already a few times, he said, uh, so it seems there is, there, there's, it's authentic, it's not just a, you know, she says, Tell him he should give it to you now. Went back to work the next day or two, a day or two later, again he appears to him, he says to him, do you want it now or do you want it at the end of your life? So he said, I'll take it now. The marriage continues, he ended his day's work and walking home, it didn't take long, he noticed laying on the ground a very glaring, shiny, sparkling stone Bends down, picks it up, it's a diamond. He takes the diamond and he, they redeem it for a small fortune. His wife says to him, she says, uh, you know, let's take and keep books on all the good deeds that we do with the money. A record of everything we do with the money. And this is what they did. They kept recording everything they did. Time passed, and the laborers working in the field, and one day, the, uh, 
there comes along the same elderly sage. He says to him, Red Beard, he taps him on the shoulder. He says, the calendar shows it's the end of seven years. So I came to take back whatever is left over from the money. So he says, well, just a minute. He says, I took the money under my wife's advice and counsel. He said, I, I can only return it. I have to first talk it over with her. So she, he went home, and his wife says, you take me to him. She comes, she waits around the field the next day, and she brings with her the book that they kept of all the deeds they did. And sure enough, he appears again. So she says, he says, we, I came to take back the money, whatever, whatever's left over. He says, listen here, here, here is the book that we kept a record of every penny, everything that was spent from those, from that diamond that we redeemed. If you can find somebody that can do better with your money, you're welcome to it. So the, ta the Talmud tells us, Mary says, that he said, you're right, and keep the money. So this, this is what our people are made of. We're, we're made of, uh, we don't live for ourselves. We, we live to make sure that others can live well and uh, enjoy good health and not us and their children. In that manner, we'll, uh, we'll be very good to be able to send the coming of Hashem, and have you made a moment. Shani Malakash Oimeh, Rosh HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Zakish Es Yisrael, the Vigo, Hiram Ter Mitzvah, Shinemar, Adinah Kodesh, Hashit Kodesh, Yagdol Torah, Vi